So you're you're working on uh, you're working on particular aspects of your plan, and every student is different. This is what I was talking about. Murray Spivak would say, "I can teach my house painter how to make a stroke, but that's because he's there with me. That's why I won't, won't write a book because every student is different." And so I have a, another student who pointed out to me. <clears throat> Watching your lesson, it was like, that's the exact opposite of me, right? You're, you're a fingers guy, he, he, right? You're a bunch of things, because you've studied with a bunch of different approaches. So you've got a, an eclectic assortment going on. I get it. He's not, he's not familiar with fingers at all. And, and that would be something that Dick would teach towards the end. To, but. And, and so what we're working on with you is, and I've been through this, I've had my own series of bad habits, trust me, right? And through diligent study, <clears throat> and uh, what does Jack Fergus say? Just will it to happen, you know, okay, maybe, but, uh, your thing is you like to throw, you go into half turned over and you pull. Then I asked you to play fingers in French, which you could do, right? pretty good. And then I asked you to go half turned over. You said, I've never done that before. He actually said that. And you probably, that's probably, you. but every time you go to make a throw for rebounds, you go into half turned over and you pull. Isn't it fascinating? Right, so what we're working on right now is to keep you in a palm down position with this three finger grip, right? Fourth and fifth don't have much to do with it. And this three finger grip is all about developing fulcrum, okay? So I came up with, with some exercises to help. And so we're gonna continue in that direction, right? And when it, gets, when it comes to, fingers, you're going to be way ahead of the game. So that's cool, right? <clears throat> but what we're trying to learn is the difference between fingers really, and developing a fulcrum that is part of a three finger grip and that is about turning the wrists, not pulling with the fingers, which will move the fulcrum location. Pulling with the fingers, <clears throat> the fulcrum is first finger and thumb. If we form a three finger grip, you feel that fulcrum running somewhere in the middle of it. Or Dick would say, and, and it's debatable, is it the middle finger? Is it somewhere in between Carlos, somewhere in between the three? But we have a, a fulcrum that's moved back, further back. Okay, It's no longer the first finger and thumb as you pull the fingers. And in true, in true, uh, and I'm still working on this. So I get it, because I didn't start off with fingers either. Or like that other stuff. You did, or you developed it, which is cool. But the, here, there's very little wrist movement. Right? There's very little wrist movement. Where the force, being applied to the lever arm, the stick, is coming from the fingers, right? And, and so this kind of thing, if you can only open your fingers so much, so you're only gonna get so much height. If you're really pure fingers, and, and so it, it, as we discussed last lesson, it, it, it will interfere with your ability to travel up in dynamics. Because fingers will only put, get you to, I don't know, maybe mezzo. Murray would say that fingers are really, really okay, really good for, for quiet passages, but every time a drummer has to play a backbeat, they always turn over and do this, <laughs> right? Because most, most guys. And so he, he suggested, why don't you learn to do this throughout the spectrum of dynamics? That's where this is going. 
Also, fingers, there's no throw. If you really, if you really get to know fingers, an accent would come by by squeezing more. <laughs> but there's no there's no motion. We're we're not we're not doing this. We're not turning, and then getting emotion. Very different. So if you want to move from grip to grip, you need to know about that stuff, or you're just playing as Richard Wilson would say. He's an any old way player. So, okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So we, we developed an exercise where we started 60, where I just had you play quarter notes. <clears throat> Maybe 72 would work. 60, 60, 60. Work on my uh, mass script. Yeah, it was twenty quarter. What's that? Seventy six. Okay. That was at seventy six. So if we're here, so it was about that, right? But I think what I, I first had to do was I had you just play like this. It's just four, yeah, it's just quarters, then then buzzing, then and buzzing. Buzzed. No, I think I just had you turning though, didn't I? Yeah, 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 three, yeah, and then throwing. And, and then, and then it went to a throw. Yeah. Go ahead and try that. <clears throat> yeah, I was doing that seventy-two. Kind of okay, good. It, it's coming along, but you're you're essentially at, by the time you got to three, it was pretty good up until three. <clears throat> Throwing for three, uh, but you're not truly. I want you to really be. Remember, Dick would say, when you're on the drum set, you're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna play with all the grips, right? He said it. So. Yeah. You're going to spend a lot of time at half turned over, but to, to learn this technique, he would have you palm down. And the gig is, is that you weren't supposed to be able to see the bottom corner of your thumbnail. If you roll into half turned over, you can see the bottom corner of it. He didn't want that. He wanted you to be like this. You've talked about the fact that if you just leave your arms alone, really leave them alone. I don't think I could get you, get you there. I thought about it. You know, maybe if you had like a five pound weight, if you have any dumbbells around, or when you're when you're at the gym or when you're back home where you have something like that, anything heavy that you could that could hold, it'll it'll help you find that what they call it, let it hang plumb. It'll help you find that position. And you will find out unless you are 
a rarity uh, that you'll come up and you'll and you'll be in half turn mode. Right. And then he'd say he'd want you to Chuck Silverman talks about that in a video. Yeah. Really cool, right? And and then and then you he wants you to turn to, into palm down. So what we're doing right now, I think, I think, especially for you. Now it's about that three finger grip. See, now the three finger grip, it becomes kind of obvious because if you were to, if you were to check it out. You see, when you're playing fingers, the, the fulcrum. Clearly, the fulcrum is here. First finger and thumb. Okay. And so, if we have first finger and thumb, and then when we go into palm down, we're playing fingers, right? Fulcrum is the first finger and thumb. Fingers glued to the stick. Okay. And and so. What we're looking for is to not be able to run an access you can imagine running a, like a rod a screw through this area right well right here right through here oh. you could you could run a, a nail through the thumbnail and run it directly through to the first finger, first knuckle. Don't you feel that? You feel that pivot point? Right, it would be right here. It would be right here. Okay. But what we're doing is we're, we're adding the middle finger. Getting the pressure of the middle of the thumb to run across in between these two fingers. So now the fulcrum is here, not here. Now, this might seem like a very small distance. Oh, well, what's the big deal? Well, it's a huge deal. This is like, I don't know how many miles. Right? Set the trajectory to fly to Jupiter, and it's off by. By the time you get to Jupiter, you're millions of miles off the target, right? Okay. So <clears throat> I want you to consider it that way. It's gonna the stick is going to run through here. That's what we're going for. Fourth and fifth only muck that up. So you start doing stuff. You start doing stuff with your fourth and fifth. Now you're using fingers, or in a desperate attempt. To believe that you're using the wrist, you'll use fingers and wrist, and now you're really now you're in in between the two worlds, between the two techniques. So, can you get your thumb, the ball of the thumb, to run? Not the energy. Get it to run a little bit more towards the middle finger. A little better. In other words, you want to put the pressure further back on the thumb, oh. right? You can, you can, you can put the pressure on the tip of the thumb by doing this. Yeah, we did that. Right? Yeah. All right, now, 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 round it out and go to the bottom of the thumb, right towards the first knuckle. Come on, could, yeah, round it out. There, you, yeah, you said you couldn't do that before, but now I see your thumb doing this. Just open up your hand for a minute to the bottom of this. Really open up your hand. 
far as you can. Everyone's a little different. So your thumb doesn't have quite as much curvature as mine. Not as much bend. It's pretty Not as much bend. Bend it all the way. Stretch your baby finger and this finger as far away as possible. I can take a look. There, see? I want it to land. You, you, you look more like that. A little flatter? You do. Kind of more like that. I want it right in here. It, it still curves down, doesn't it? it? I don't want the pressure here. Yeah. I don't want it here, here, or even here. I want it here. Okay, right there. That's where I want. The, that's where I want, want to feel the pressure, and it's going to run towards the other two fingers. Okay. So let's go back to this now. We're thinking about the palm down position. We don't want to be able to see the bottom of the thumbnail. Oh, you're right. You were perfect. I don't know why you moved it. Now I can't see your pad at all. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, just, I had to plug in. Oh, I just... but that positioning is very good. Okay. That'll work. Okay, so. See, you're not in palm down. I bet you can see, but your thumbs look better. Make sure you're in palm down. Look how flat I am. Now I can see the corner of my thumbnail. Now I can. Try that. Roll into half turned over just to get to know. Yeah, just, just swivel. Why was that hard for you? Like this. Now you're half turned over. Go into French. Keep the stick in the same position. The French. Okay, go back to palm down. I asked you to keep see the angle of the stick. See this? It, it's not like this. It's like this, isn't it? I think Dick would say there's a, a typical 30 degree angle. It goes on. Here, right, see? Right. Now, so keep that angle, and in the right, go into half turned over. Keep that angle. It's as if this is a handlebar. It's not going to move. No, don't bring the butt end in. It's a handlebar. You're just twisting around it. You got it. Go into French. Leave the handlebar right where it is. Go into more French. Come on, thumb really up. No, you pulled the butt end in. You broke your handlebar. It's a, it's a bicycle. It ain't going to move. All you can do is hold it in different ways. You see, look. Watch. Hold the stick here. Do, just do this with me. This is important, you know. Get this stuff out of the way. Yeah, you have a 30 degree angle, and you're going to just hold the stick like that with the other hand. Let it, just let it go. This is your handle. It's been soldered on to the, to the assembly that moves the steering, the uh, bicycle's front wheel. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to make a palm down grip. Yeah, just make a palm down grip. Three finger grip. Hold the stick. Sorry, I'm just copy me. Hold the stick. Think about where the thumb is sending energy. Think about that three finger grip. Cool. Now you're not going to move. The stick can't move. Now you're just going to roll around it. Go into French. Yeah, there. Now go into half turned over. Yeah, see the stick stays in one place. But what I'm showing you. French. Uh-huh. Calm down. French. My elbow, my elbow seems to move. Yours doesn't move at all. This, this happens naturally for me. Look at this. And then it comes in. <laughs> there. My elbow. There. Yeah, you're feeling it. You felt it. But you don't do it. You don't do it. That's better. See, the body will react in certain ways. Me to keep this position. Now I'm like this. Now I know we can play timpani in other ways. I know. But, okay. I just wanted you to think about that. Okay. So now we're in palm down. That three finger grip. Okay. You can think about that. You have to meditate on this stuff. We're just going to turn.
I'm going to turn them on. Do that in the other hand. Do that in the other hand. Don't lose palm down, three finger grip. Good. Now buzz it. Let's keep the metronome off. Have them successful. Focus on the thumb. The arms relaxed. Are you really at the floor? I don't even think you're quite at the floor. Come on, get the butt end down. It's cool. You got your mirror. I can tell. Okay. Okay. Now, everything we talked about. Remember, the wrist is a fulcrum as well. It's a hinge. Yeah. And all we have to do is maintain that grip and turn. I don't mind if you leave it on the surface. on the surface. You want to dig it in, but a little pressure. Yeah. Dig it in, just to do either, either or, right? Okay, keep doing that. Maintain that three finger grip. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go pop, pop, pop. Now you're losing your palm down right now. Go back to buzzing. There. Now can you keep that and go da da da? You don't really have to open anything up, you know. Be surprised. It, it's kind of a it's almost a phenomenon. Don't lose your palm down position. How flat I am. Let's do this. Now buzz and th turn for three. Buzz and then turn for three. Okay, turn. Good. Better, you're more palm down. Buzz, turn for three. Now buzz and throw for three. You got palm down, you lost it. So it may part may partly be your throw as well. It was really good up until the throw. So and your throw is taking you out of position. Let's figure that out and keep moving. But this is important because this is your hang up. So we're just going to free for who knows how long. You know, you'll start to learn some of the strokes and you'll get better and better, definitely. <clears throat> but it really won't be this. Okay. So let's see, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So we're gonna do look, 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 look. Remember where the fulcrum is now? Like running here? Do this with me. I've created a little, I've, I've made this space a little wider. I've made the space in between the first finger and the middle finger a little wider for uh, demonst to demonstrate. Okay, so now you're here. Bring that down, bring your <clears throat> the heavy symbol, okay? We Symbolic as well. Okay, but <clears throat> so now we're here. I want you to be in this position. Uh, good. Okay. Back over here. Yeah. How, how am I doing? Yeah, right. That's why it looked different. Good. 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 Now, now do you feel this fulcrum right here? Yeah. There it is. 
Look how straight you are. Look, it's straight, isn't it? It doesn't go half turned. Now try to go half turned over here and leave leave this, this uh, what is a remedial device. Leave that in place. If you go to half turned over, you, you, you lose the flatness and now you're you're not you see you're not moving around this fulcrum. You'll have the thumb and the first finger and the middle finger are all rubbing on the stick as you do this. If you go into half turned over, you lose that. If you really want to go into half turned over properly, we'll get there. But right now, let's, let's keep this simple. Okay, yeah. Now come back in this position so that the hand that's holding the stick as, as if it were going to play, I want you to put the fulcrum back. I want you to put this device back underneath. So my device is pointing straight. My left hand, there you go. And now we have this again, right? Come on, now make get it flat. Get it flat. My elbow's not pointing out. I found a position where I'm nice and relaxed. Huh? Now, just do this. Roll around that. There, now come back. Up, down. Up, down, up. All the way there. Whee! Right? It stays flat. It's kind of flat. It's very flat, right? So now when I go up, <laughs> there's some of that feeling. This is moving with me now, but I'm rolling around it. You see. Like that. Yeah. And then and then it would go it would still be moving around it. Try it again, almost. Not bad. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna go up. I'm making this stuff up. Come up. It's moved around this thing, hasn't it? Don't point your first finger. Tip should be touching a little bit. And now on the way down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now imagine that you're going up. And you have a fulcrum, and you're going to come down nice and flat. Do it again. Imagine the imagery. Turn as you come. Now you're much better. Now watch as you. There, better. See the forearm. Got your fulcrum. The forearm will fall. You'll finish the stroke, but you'll be rolling through that fulcrum. Now you're flat. Do that again. That's better. See, we, no, don't go twisting. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. Good. Now just play, play three notes. Don't move too much. Just come on, move her. Go on up, nice and easy. Go on up. Better, better. Come up less now. Just come up to here. We don't, we don't want just what's needed. Not more, not, not more, not less. Go on, do it again. Now, now you notice when we did this, we got up to the top, we got up to the top. There was no running away from it. What? Now watch me. There's none of this stuff where I, now I need some extra juice. No, -uh. you move, you're turning. See, it's, you're turning. So you, and as you're turning, it feels like you're moving around a fulcrum. Turning, and then on the way down, you're turning. So there is this feeling of getting to the top, that day and tonight, where there's just a moment there before you do this. Yeah, now, now actually, let's try this. Something like this. Okay, so see? Middle of the thumb here. All right, so we're going to go up and make a strike. And keep that other stick up with it. Come on, make a strike. Almost. Watch, watch. 
Pace. At first, I almost. It doesn't move very much at the top, does it? First, I want to feel moving around it in the other direction. I'll move in the other direction and, and just move around it just a tiny bit, quarter of an inch. Now, if I left start to lower, keep turning up, keep turning up, and finish it like that. Do it with the stick again. You have to be at the floor to start. Up, then start to turn around the stick and then slowly lower the other stick. There you go. Come on, complete the. the, the can you do it in real time? Can you actually make a strike? around it. I almost feel like you're pushing the stick down, are you? I'm just moving with I'm this, this other stick underneath is moving with it. I'm never pushing down on it. Keep going. No, keep doing it with the other stick. Maybe this will work, maybe it won't. Maybe this will help other people. I don't know. So we're doing this. Okay, so we're coming up. Coming up. And now we're coming down. Yeah, you're not getting. You're not getting the. Uh, you're not getting. Really are. So at the end, you're really moving around the stick, aren't you? You're always moving around the stick. One more time. One down. Move around the stick. Okay, let me figure this out. Okay, I am moving around the stick in this way, okay, going this way, before the stick gets to the floor. I catch up with it, watch. Moving around the stick that way, and now I'm moving around with the stick. Moving around right at the end, let's see, if I slowed it down right at the end, here it's moving around the stick. Moving around the stick towards the end. There, there, that's it. Try, try once more with the stick. I don't spend too much more time. Make sure you're moving around that stick at the end. Right there, come on, no, you're not moving around it. It's already gone to the floor. It moves around now, 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 now. No, it moves around, it moves around the stick now. No, you're waiting. It's got to move around the stick now. It's right at the end. Right there, it's got to move around. Okay, all right. You're gonna have to keep working on that, but now you're nice and flat. Good, you fix it. No, you're just, just come on up, pretend there's something underneath there, and then come down. You don't have to rush through it. It's this thing, it's a very controlled motion. It's this machine. Better, okay. Now, I want, I want you just, just, don't blow through the top of the stroke. Don't blow through the top of the stroke. Get to here. No. No. Come on, you don't have to move too fast. You don't have to move fast. I'm at the top. Now I'm coming down. Top. I'm at the top. And then I come down. To the top. You never kind of, doesn't feel like you're ever willing to say, I'm at the top. Here, do this. Top. Down. It has to move slow, smoothly. It barely, it gets to the top. Almost like maybe is it slowing down a little bit? Does the stick slow down a little bit before it goes in the other direction? It does. Gravity is pulling on it, pulling on it, pulling on it, pulling, and then it comes down. So you go up. There's no gravity. It's just blowing through it. I want you to come up. Feel gravity start to want. Feel gravity start to pull it in the other direction. There. Now you can feel it. There. It feels stretchy, doesn't it? Much better. You come up smoothly and you start to feel, okay, I'm going to give you a metaphor. Dick would say returning your wrist is a little bit like a paddle in a ball. You know, the stretchy string and the ball and the paddle. And there's this relationship 
Well, it feels like that here too. It feels like, uh, I'd be careful with these metaphors, but it feels like I'm stretching something. Maybe if there was a, a, a stretchy string here attached to the floor somehow, and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling against it. And at a certain point, it's going to say, I don't want you to break me. I want to go in the other direction. And you do. Try that. Try that thinking. Go on up and think of you're stretching a string, the opposite of a marionette in a way. Yeah, you're stretching that and it wants to pull the other way now. Let it. And it's not going to pull too fast. It'll pull it back down. The amount of stretch you want, much better. The amount that you tighten it is the amount it'll release. It just does, it doesn't go like this. It goes, yeah, boom. It's probably some map much better. Much better. You feel it, don't you? You can feel it. It was, I want to go that way. I don't want to keep going here. Come on. Okay, now now do this. Now do this with me. That worked for you. Now you've got your three finger grip. Let's let's try the other dip thing. Turn your wrist. But make sure you're flat with a three finger grip. Now imagine rubber ball in a string works for you, Joe. Imagine you've got the ball in the string and you're, and you know, so it's the string is pulling, wants you to go this way, then you hit the ball. And there is no ball, so, but you understand? It's the string. It's, you're stretching, you're stretching. It's harder to go up than down, Jack Berger. You're stretching that thing. It wants to is kind of a little different, you know, it might feel a little bit like you're bouncing. You can feel that you're you are lifting. See, if you're stretching the string, you are means you're lifting to stretch it. So that's where you, it's up to come down, you see. If you're not just bouncing it up. You've got to stretch the string and it pulls it back. Stretch the string, pull back. Stretch the string, stretch the string, stretch, 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 so, if we're stretching the string, I'm, I'm staying with a metaphor that really works for you. Come on, stretch it. It'll pull it back. Then stretch it and it pulls it back. Stretch down. Okay. Now, what would happen if you stretch the string here? One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, come on. One, two, three. Come on, feel the stretch. Feel the stretch. Lift it up from here. Better. Get straight up, and then it's going to. Don't just pull it away. That string, that string is going to be straight. There. The string does never get pulled off to one side or behind. It goes straight up. And it goes straight down. Come on, don't pull it off at the top. You like to pull out to the side on the top. Straight up, straight down. There. Don't go up quite as high this time. There. Look, you're flat. Speed that up. Go, don't go up so high and think of that string staying straight. Now you're stretching the string there. You're stretching the string there. Yeah, speed it up. Don't, don't go out to the side and pull the string sideways. Go straight up. There. Yeah, man. Look how flat you are. Don't mess with the stretchy string. Better. Come on, speed it up. Don't go up too high. Especially you're faster. There you go. Faster, 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 faster. Right there. Keep it there. There you go. Keep it there. Keep it there. You can't just keep it there. Now play doubles. Da da. Da 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 da. Don't stop. Don't stop. Da da. Then then a throw. Da 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 da. Throw. 
Come on, the string, the string, the flatness. You come. Come on. Go back to singles. Flatten out a little bit. Flatten out. Play singles. Play singles. Good step. Nice easy stretch. Faster. Stay small. Come on. Stay faster. So I got through to you. I know what we need to do right now. Much better. So what we need to do is pull out memory speedbacks up and down stroke exercise. Find that. Yeah, I got you to feel that. That's cool. Maybe Vinny's right. Vinny says, oh, I like metaphors. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I argued, I, 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 I stood up from my side of the argument. It's a little hard to stand up to Vinny, I got to tell you. I don't know. I think it's, it seems that things got a little screwed. Remember that string has to go up straight. It's the elbow that'll, that'll do a little something. Not, not this. Did you find that exercise? Yeah, Up and down. Page seven. Find that? Yes. Testing one, two, three. Check. Cool. All right. So, you see what it is? This is how we're going to flatten you out. So, where would we put the next one? That's the best you've looked. You were just doing, see you're flat. That's with this technique. And once you start to really understand it, you can be in other positions and maintain a lot of what we've already talked about. Just go yanking it up, stretch it up. Now come down, feel it pull. And you just get to the top of the stretch. It'll show some, give you some resistance. Right there. And, and now watch, I'll add, I'll add one other thing. I, I, you, because it's changed just a little. But not only are we stretching an imaginary stretchy string like the paddle in a ball. I used to have a paddle in a ball. I think I still do, but the string broke. So there are two different parts of the house. Um, and so we're stretching, we're stretching the string here, right, right here. And it stays straight. The other stick is, the other stick is the string. This is the string, it stays straight, right? We're stretching it. And then, and then it's, it wants to pull everything down, right? So again, it's harder to go up than down, perhaps. Okay, now, we already talked about the stretching of the string when we just turn our wrist, right? Remember? We're stretching a string, that's the paddle in a ball that Dick mentioned to me. with this three finger grip, as Richard Martinez talks about it, where you position the thumb has a lot to do with where you're sending the energy. I want it in the center of this thumb. Okay, so we have that grip. We're stretching the string under here and it wants to pull it down, which is why we can do this, right? Just do this with me. Stretch and then it pulls it down. Keep the bead right in the center. Okay, now, when we turn for a regular wrist turn, 
With that three finger grip, we're stretching the string and it pulls it down, stretch, stretching it. Now when we go to make, now when we go to make a motion, we're gonna stretch two strings. First, we're stretching this one. And then as it pulls it down, we're gonna stretch the other one. We're gonna work in, we're gonna work in concert. There you go. So think of, there, you see, now you're connected. You're not running off from it. Bam, bam, right, it's, it's somehow, the instrument's drawing you in. You never lose connection with it. That's kind of what this metaphor implies or helps us get in touch with. You're connected, aren't you? You know the wrist is going to get pulled down. You know the bead wants to go. It's all connected. You've connected it to the floor here. You've connected the string and the, okay, you get it. Metronome at 40, 40, nice and slow. This is just remedial. This isn't, we're gonna blow everybody away. However, the way you were just playing singles, it's, that's cool. I mean, you've watched, singles can be tricky. You have to turn for every note. You don't, you don't get to rely on rebound. Really getting this positioning and this fulcum together Will give you a lot of speed because now if it, now if you if you see you're doing that da 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 as opposed to da 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 we get yeah we get much more speed okay starting starting to get the idea okay all right. 40. Now you see what you just did? This is an old habit that has nothing to do with what you're learning this technique. Is he, you know. Yeah, I know. Now, now yeah, see, if you're attached to a, a string and you did that, it would, if you pulled out this way, it would pull you back here. It, it, right? We want to, we don't want to get out of position. That doesn't, that doesn't give us the feeling of what we know we're going to be experiencing when we play. That's the feeling we want. Lifting it up and it comes down, we're stretching it up and it comes, see, we're connected. This fulcrum grip, the fulcrum grip, there I named it. Well, Let's see it in, in. Let's see it in action. Now, are you shoving down, or does it feel like you're stretching up? Stretching down. Come up a little less and get a little more flat. Remember. Thing is, we're not trying to just let me get you to this. We're not trying to outrun the stretchy string. I'm going with this metaphor today. Okay. We're, we're not we're not trying to watch. If there were truly a string that was being stretched, right, and you were actually moving so that that string was affecting how you were moving, connected to how you would be moving. If we stretch the string this way, it's going to come back at a certain speed. If we pull, if we pull the paddle and the ball this way at this speed, you're going to get a re you're going to get a reaction. What we don't want to do is outrun that natural reaction. We don't want to stretch it and then why bother stretching it at all? Stretch it and it wants to Stretch back. You're connected. We don't outrun the stretch. We don't outrun it. We get the feeling of how much tension is there to pull us back naturally. Now, we also don't want to outrun this, the stretch when we go this way, and you are. What are you doing? You're going. No, if you turn this much, 
it's going to pull you back that fast. You come up that fast, it'll pull you back faster. Won't it? You have that feeling, doesn't it? Going up slowly. That's how much you've stretched. That's how much it's going to stretch you back. Nice and flat. Yeah, now, now do a fast one. It's coming up the same height. No, do faster. No, no, no. Yeah, it stretches up fast and pulls you back fast. You feel it, don't you? You feel it. Okay, when you're going to make a throw, if you make a throw, you're stretching in here, then you have to decide how much you're going to cock your wrist or stretch the string, and it's going to affect how fast it comes back. No, you, you stretched it too far. Didn't seem like it was, there you go. There you go. There you go. Don't try to outrun the string. If you want it to come down faster with more volume, you can maybe turn faster. Try it. Go on up and turn faster. Don't push your arm down. Yeah, see? There. Now turn slower. Go on up. Nice and easy. Stretch that string. Well, now it's now it's become not in real time. You, have, you want it to be natural and loose. There you go. Turn your wrist nice and easy at the top. Which I want you to do in real time. See? Nice and easy. Here's stretching that way, stretching that way. That way, that way. Stretching this way. Now I'm going to come down fast. We could do that. Yeah, now go now go up the same speed and come down slower. No, I just let's see, we're still in time, right? Watch. I'm stretching, stretching the string. Stretch. Now I'm going to do a, a fast one. Come down fast. There. There. Now, now just come down a little slower by not cocking so fast. Cock slower. There. Go slow. There. See, you're still getting a throw, aren't you? Now you're starting to feel it. Good, Joe. Okay, so that's what I want you to concentrate about. I want you to focus on when you're doing this. Now here, I, I'm not making that classic upstroke. I'm I'm turning for every note at 40. A little bit of a it doesn't matter. Turning for everything. I'm not dropping the I'm not dropping the stick from here because I want to I want to maintain this volume right now. I want you to feel this stretch. Metronome mark 40. Come on, think about the stretching. Just don't go shoving your arm down. It's got to be pulled down. There you go. I want you to turn. I want you just to turn and not make a throw. I just want this. Feel the stretching, pulling it up, paddling a ball. That's why there seems to be some kind of relationship about the speed on, on the way up and the speed on the way down. Have a relationship. Okay, now you feel that turn? Feel how much you're lifting? Feel the level of stretch? All you're going to do is maintain this and make a throw. I want you to maintain this. Stretch, 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 stretch. I know this is your flatness. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Not bad. Okay, now play the next exercise. You're going to make the accent on the left, right? As you know, the accent just keeps moving. It's four iterations. Kevin, it was my understanding that when I played the accent, it was the same height as the under and accent. Sorry, Ted. Okay. You're saying? I said that, like right there, <clears throat> I kind of, it was my understanding that the accent was almost the same height as the unaccented note. We're supposed to, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to follow you, Joe, and I want to know exactly what you're saying. 
Okay, can, check, check. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, I felt that the accent was the same height as the unaccented note. That's what you were feeling? Yeah, I wasn't trying to turn too, too, too much, turn the wrist upward too yeah, much. That's, that's kind of what I was hipping you to. It's not a dead, it's, it's, you can see it's not a hard and fast rule. Once we understand how things work, we could go up slowly and turn really fast. But because we understand the relationship of a wrist turn up to down, it's not going to be much more, is it? It's just doing this over and over. Now you're just going to incorporate emotion. Kind of what I was, you don't have to turn higher like that. You, yeah, just get this feeling. Three finger grip, turn, stretch, paddle in a ball, whatever works for the, the individual. And all you're going to do is incorporate a, a, a motion. And, and the motion is going to involve that stretchy thing that seems to be working. The arm shouldn't come down faster than it goes up, right? And the, and the turn, there's a relationship, the wrist turn. Yeah, that's better. Nice and flat, three fingers up. Any fingers in the hand that's just turning for the singles. Hold the stick, you don't need any fingers. It's fine, and you're just turning. Okay, now, so you're gonna play the next exercise, right? It will, Oh, uh, with the left. Uh, is that what you're just doing? I lost track of it. One and and, and two and one. Ah, uh, and uh, count count out loud for me. So I know. One ah and two ah and two. See, you've lost your stretchy turn. Come on, where's this paddle a ball thing? You've got to turn up a little bit. Remember, it was somewhere in here. Really wanted you to feel. I want you to come past parallel. Turn up a little. And make the make the regular wrist turns in between. Make these bigger. Good job. Now we're gonna do the third iteration. Third iteration. One uh, and a one uh, and a one uh, and a one uh, and a. Okay, the very last intervention. One uh, and a one uh, and a one uh, and a one uh, and a one and a one uh, and a. Don't be yanking too high. Make sure this is attached. Don't let it pull off and go up. Off in its own rogue left hand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll hit you to something. Keep playing. No, stop playing. So that everybody can hear me, especially you and me, because I need to keep hearing this stuff too. Dick would say, Kevin, when you go to make your throw, it feels, it feels like the stick is getting longer. Now go ahead and try that and see if, see if you can feel that. He said, of course it isn't, but it feels like it is. Try that. No, don't give me any of this weird stuff. You're stretching that. No, just stretch it up and let it pull it down. No, now you're starting to lift. There you go. Feel it get longer? Don't leave with your elbow. Stretch that. There you go. Feel it get longer? Yeah. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, you're experiencing that now. Okay, so let's pop the metronome up. Let's double it. What happened at 72? Let's go to 72. No, I don't want you. Here's here's the case where I'm saying don't just turn from parallel. 
don't don't give me this thing. Right. Because I, I because we're now doing this is different thing. We're we're trying to maintain this volume. Now we could add force and create it an up. Yeah. I can add force and and and, and turn. I don't want to get into that right now. I'll keep this very simple. Turn your wrist, make a motion. Notice I'm staying on the flat of the bead, on the bottom of the bead. So when I yank up and lose the bottom of the bead, which will happen if you use your elbow or you come up too soon. Straight up. No, you went sideways. There you go. You're missing, you're missing the one note. It's gotten too fast for you, huh? Pretty, damn, pretty close. Stay your palm down and left. You don't have to lose that note, the upstroke. I make a little throw and maintain that. Come on, the note, the, uh, the upstroke, the up note, the note just before the throw has to be just as big a turn. You're just starting to dip it. You're doing this dip, 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 which is cool, but that's not what we're doing. I want you to maintain this turn. Three finger grip. All on a string. First class, whatever. You gotta maintain this. And then add and add the throw. Okay, so 72 is, is as fast as you really about as fast as you can go right now to really keep this clean. Now let's just so with the 72. Now give me the uh, six eight. Uh, a first iteration. At 72? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the metronome in a second. Okay. okay. So we've got, where's your metronome now? Did you leave it at 72? Yeah. Give me a turn here. The regulars, I don't want them down in here. You could. But that's not what we're doing. We're doing this. That's about as fast as you can. So 60 is your top. Now bring it down to uh, 52. I want more of a turn. I want I want to see the, the turns that are occurring before you make your throw. I, I want to see that you can really that you're really experiencing this wrist turn, this paddle on a ball on a string. you'll still feel that even if you don't turn that high but that really gives you time to feel the, the thing wanting to pull back there you go now just make a throw and maintain that like you said i'll, I'll just find my like turning my wrist the same just making a throw there yeah, that looks really good okay this speed at this speed you're like golden yeah, look at my setting straight up and down don't lose the turn now you've gone into this thing again don't go dippy doodle on me on, go back to the wrist turns. I think what I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you stop. I'm going to have you play 
a certain num a number of uh, repeats, and then you're just going to go back to turning. So you're going to go. Uh, 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 Give me uh, four times in a row and then go back. Now four of the throws. Can't lose that now. The turn there, you got it back. So so what's happening is so what's happening is you're doing this. Throw, turn, throw, turn. Throw, turn, right up. Now do two. One, two, throw. One, two, throw. One, two, and throw. And you got it. That's what I want you to experience. I want you to be turning. So you were you topped out at. 52, at 60, you stop. Metronome's a dotted quarter. Was it a dotted quarter when we were 52? Go ahead, go slow. Okay, so 52. We'll put the metronome at 120. Let's just see what happens. Da, 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 ba, ba, da, da, ba, da, da. Calm down, turn. Start with that. Now what you want to do, it's not bad, not bad. You want to make sure that you're stopping down, especially in your right. enough times more slowly you'll get it but here's what's happening now you are I'm gonna do it much slower so that you can actually see it but if you don't stop down we, we want to stop down okay. uh, 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 and watch if I don't stop down Yeah, you, you lose your wrist turn. If you stop up in the air, now now you don't have the stretchy string. You've lost your, as soon, any one of these notes, whether it's the throw or a turn, if it doesn't stop down, you've lost the feeling of the stretchy string. It means you're no longer up to come down. You stopped up, and now you're going down. Okay, but we want to feel the up to come down. Not stopping up so that there's only the down. You have to feel that. Now just stop up in the air. Hold it up in the air. Now, now you and imagine you think you're playing three notes, and that one only goes down. It goes just down. Right. What you're doing as it gets faster, you have to maintain the floor or you lose the stretch. 
you, you, you get that? Yeah. It's not kind of obvious, isn't it? I mean, we're looking for that kind of meticulousness. Why would we ever lose? We don't want to lose that. play this guy. I'm a traditional guy. But they're this they're this, you know, there's some cross lateral transference. So better today. You're making better contact with your instrument. Right? Like you've gone out and got a tan or something. A tan, right. Good job, Joe. I'm gonna turn off the uh the camera.